Um, art as a source of inspiration is a topic of, or was the topic of this talk at Fundación Vela. What was your motivation to uh, participate in this talk? Oh, I'm extremely interested in, in people who've thought hard about the idea of communication to a large number of people. One of the things that didn't really, in a way it was implicit, but it didn't come out very openly was this idea that at many points in the in the in the twentieth century and uh, the late modern period, you could say artists really um, wanted to communicate to a large number of people. There was a strong democratic impulse, and I wanted to hear like the the this kind of specialist position, you know, the art historian, the the the, the person involved with the the idea of the art directors. Uh, club or what have you and 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 I was there really almost as a an, an independent observer you know like where you have uh, during a political negotiation you need an independent observer to make sure that everything's okay um, what I was really a little bit surprised is that um, um, it was said that you know creativity or yeah, no. So, I'm sorry. Some, some artists uh, can be are creative, and, and the advertisers are not are not that good anymore, and things like that. How do you think about that? Because I think uh, it hasn't to do what what you do, um, or, or what you, what you are, what your profession is, but uh, how you sure. do it. Exactly. So it's clear to me, of course, that people do not say what they really believe when they're talking in public. So um, one of the things is that. Uh, um, I'm, I'm not sure I really believe this coquettish position of the advertiser saying that it has no value. They know damn well it does, because otherwise people wouldn't be using it or wouldn't be trying it. What they probably mean is it, its status, its, its level of potential in the culture is maybe disputed. It's not clear. When I was a child, the British um, power company would have to change the level of power supply because during the adverts, in popular programs, everyone would go to put on the kettle to make tea, so that the, the power usage would go up in the country, so they had to keep watching, and they would see it go up and down, so everyone was watching adverts together, collectively, because there were only one channel where you could see them. And this created a kind of shared experience. We don't have that anymore. So what happens to it is, is you know, that, that you do have in the culture this constant appropriation of language, this constant appropriation of the language of creativity, of inspiration. Even if you're a McDonald's manager, you're supposed to have, be able to work in a team, be inspired, be creative, work out solutions to problems. And you know what? I work. I just work, mainly. I deal with material facts and particular situations, and I work. And I'm not thinking... Um, this is the big revelation of working with this kind of fashion world. They really have inspiration. They have these boards on the wall with ideas and pictures and things. And when I get up in the morning, I have an empty table because I'm always clearing it. So I have an empty table because every day I want to decide if I want to be an artist again. It sounds very romantic, but it's true. So every day I come to a clean table and I think, what kind of artist do I want to be today? That is not a creative thing. It's a kind of melancholy. It's a kind of nihilism. There's a lot of defeatism in art. Art's more, for me, about delusion and distraction than it is about creativity or inspiration. I see things. I look at things all the time, but I'm not looking for um, a single position. I'm looking for a kind of network of references So, and something that cannot be had, something that's just out of reach. So this, is, this means that, that you know, uh, someone else can have inspiration, but it's not, not for me. I don't need it. Um, what also um, was for me very interesting when you said that um, you can't, as an artist, you can't escape this world of... Um, the, the consumer world, the, this mm -hmm. world that you are put into by magazines, for example, mm -hmm. by journalists, and, and your criti uh, critique, or your art critique, because um, yeah, it's it's just you mentioned um, uh, the Swiss artist um, Thomas Hirschhorn. Thomas Hirschhorn. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean that he is next to um, you know a luxury brand. Wow. 
I, you know, when I said this, I'm not, I don't know, I, try, I was trying in my head to think of a specific example, but he, it's going to, if, if he's in, for example, in certainly in a mainstream magazine, a news magazine, it's going to happen, right? And the point is that it doesn't mean that he is a hypocrite or a bad person, nothing at all. He's a highly principled man. The, the reason to use the example is because I was getting frustrated that we're only talking about Warhol, Coons, Murakami, and I think in order to understand something like this, we need to look at the example of what you'd call a good man or an ethical man, someone who tries hard or a woman. And that's why I wanted to introduce him because we should be able to say that he can avoid this system and that he can be completely outside it, but of course it's not possible. So. There's a strong critique in his work of imagery, of the communication of digital imagery, the, the idea of a synthetic world where people have no ability to be disturbed or distressed anymore. This is quite close to what we're talking about. And um, I wanted to bring it up because I think that it's an important component. Every time you think that there's an appropriate artist to use as an example, I think it's good to look in the other direction, you know? Um, Meaning, can we escape something? And if we can, what would it look like? What would this escape be like? What would that life be like? You know? Yeah. What do you say? What is um, inspiring people? You know, I mean, um, most at the moment is is it advertising is that that's inspiring art or art as inspiring advertising or uh, how, or mm, let's put it that way. Um, how are the connections between all the creative... Um... There, yeah, there's a, there's a battle taking place about who controls the flow of information. So we see already that when you look at something on YouTube, you, you're constantly checking, am I really seeing a ironic, stupid video or am I being sold something? Because already for 10 years, people have been manipulating social relations. Right, so what what I find most interesting is not that it's not that they use uh, BlackBerry messaging to have riots in London, or that that, that a corporation is using uh, Facebook to do something. It's the fact that there's a battle over this about who will control it and how it will turn out, and the the fact that you know when I when I'm in certain a hotel or in a certain business it blocks part of my internet. I can't access something. Today I was trying in my hotel to look for information about Pussy Riot, the Russian group. Just curious in the Guardian newspaper, because of the name, the word Pussy, it's blocked by the hotel. He's acting as my censor. But of course they're doing it in a, in a stupid way. So, so for me it's not so much about um, advertising as such your art it's more about these conduits these these pipes of information and how they will how they will go in the future you know that's where the dynamic is um, last question maybe um, Fondation Baylor um, it's uh, at the moment it's really a mixture between um, you know classic art mm -hmm. and contemporary art um, how you like that and, and how do you um, yeah <laughs> Uh, do you think this is something that uh, is a good idea to do? I, 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 I grew up going to two types of institution. One was what we would call like the art center, where you have the cinema, you have the bookshop, you have the gallery, you have the theater. And this was my first encounter. And these were the places that made me inspired because they had this kind of multiple forms. And at the same time, I would go to the Tate the old original Tate, because it's free. And of course it had work, it had British art from about 1600 to the present day. So I grew up going to a museum that was full of art from different periods. And I've never really, uh, I've never really been comfortable with these classic um, time divisions about art. But um, I do think what happens is it, it makes the contemporary art suffer more because of course there's the tendency to treat the contemporary art as if it has a certain value in the culture that's equal or on the same level as the older art and this can cause problems. It can make it harder to have a radical program or it can make some work suffer or die 
can make some kinds of projects very hard to do. So I think it's a great thing, but I think it makes life really, really difficult for the institution. Uh, yes, now the, the really last question, uh, because I'm also interested in um, your projects at the moment. What are you working on? Um, well, despite all this conversation about handbags earlier, I'm doing always a lot of work that's nothing to do with that. But it's also kind of graphic or has some engagement with things. So I've been designing the covers for the Eflux readers, which are a series of books, theory books about art. Um, Simon Critchley's last two books of philosophy I did the covers for. And then I'm doing an exhibition in London for the first time for four or five years in October in a gallery. And, uh, and then the, the kitchen from the German pavilion will go on show permanently in Bilbao, at the Guggenheim Bilbao, which is its new home. And it, the cat will speak Basque oh, that's cool. from now on. Yeah. So that's, that's what I'm doing. Uh, really, the last question, uh, do you like cats? <laughs> I'm, I'm aware of what cats signify in the culture. And I'm also aware of the way that they're endless. And that the cat is the one that's still alive when you... In periods of kind of disaster, they just appear from nowhere. You know, I'm, I'm, I like their endlessness. They're desert creatures, so I like their metaphorical potential. <laughs>